welcome we are going to discuss the operations of set theory we have already discussed the basics of the set theory what is a set what do you mean by universal sets what is a phi set we have already discussed these things but as i have already told you that set theory has become an essential part of managerial decision making process to calculate the probability theory we must understand the very basics of set theory the operations of the set theory is practically going to be applied in understanding of relations and functions probability and various lot other things in mathematics which is going to be basically used for managerial decision making under certainty under risk and under uncertainty so basically we are going to discuss operations of sets how set theory is going to be applied what are different conditions what are the different rules and regulations these things are very important from our perspective we have learnt how to perform the operations of addition subtraction multiplication and division on numbers but set theory is little bit different a set comprises of well defined objects a set comprises of objects or elements which are defined to be included in the particular set so something which is not well defined to be in that subject in that set is not going to be included in the set theory but the sets can be added the sets can be subtracted multiplied and all so we are going to learn how some operations of addition subtraction multiplication is going to be applied when two sets are there and these operations are going to be applied what they are going to giving rise to so we must understand these operations operations of addition multiplication and various other things the first of all we must learn we must understand union of sets let a and b be two sets union of set a and set b will consist of elements of set a and elements of set b if there is any common element between a and b which means one element which is already finding a place on the set a is also present in set b we will not take it twice so a union b will only include everything present in set a and set b only once the symbol u is used to denote union addition symbolically we write a union b and read it as a union b we are taking one example let set a be 2 4 6 and 8 it has four elements 2 4 6 and 8 four numbers and set b has four elements 6 8 10 and 12 find a union b we have to find those elements which are present in both the sets but they are not going to be repeated you can see that there are two elements 2 and 4 which is unique in set a there are two elements 10 and 12 which is unique in b but there are two elements 6 and 8 which are present in a as well as b 
So we must include them only once, not twice. So A union B becomes 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 12. So the common elements are going to be included in the union of sets only once instead of two. Another example, let A be the set which includes English vowels. Five vowels are there in English. So five vowels, A, E, I, O, U. Five items, five numbers, five elements, five alphabets. And set B includes A, I and U. Three, only three. Three alphabets. So we have to find set A union B and prove that A union B is exactly equal to set A. Five elements are there in element, five elements are there in set A. Out of that three elements are in B which are again included in A as well as B. So as per our rule, we are taking all these units only once. So A union B will be A, E, I, O, U, five elements. This is exactly similar to set A. So we prove that A union B is equal to set A. This illustration gives a theory that unions of two sets will be exactly equal to one of the sets if one of the sets is the subset of the other set. What do you mean by set and what do you mean by subset? Subset means each element of set A is present in set B and in addition to that set B contains more elements. So in that case A is a subset of set B. So similarly, here because A includes all the five alphabets that is available in English vocabulary and B includes only three. So by that rule, B is a subset of A. So because of that, A union B is exactly equal to A. So that is the point to remember that if one set is a subset of another, then addition of both the sets will give rise to the larger set. You can see the diagram that A union B represents. A union B represents which means A is added to B but there are some common elements which coming in between. These common elements are in between. This is shown by the uh, middle position in the diagram and which is written a, a union B which means some element of set A is exactly similar to some elements of set B. Once it is present in set A and once is it, it is present in set B. So that is why we must not take it twice. While adding A plus B, A union B, we must not take it twice. We will only take it once. So that's why this is the common diagram that represents A union B. I will give you a small example. If you are playing cards, then you must remember that there are four suits in a playing card, 52 cards, 13 each, clubs, 13, hearts, 13, diamond is 13 and spades is 13. Suppose I take 13 diamonds and I out of the four suits I find four aces which is called as ikke in Hindi. One of the diamond is an ace and one of the ace is a diamond. So if you take diamonds at set B and aces at set A, you will find that one of the element is present in both the sets. It is repeated twice. So that one thing which is repeated both the sets, that one S which is part of the diamonds and also part of the four S's is known as A intersection B. 
that is the common part which is present in that set. Some properties of the operation of union because almost all the operative functions of the set theory has some kind of rules and regulations associated with it which we must understand to be able to apply it in applicative portions of set theory. It says the first thing is commutative A union B is exactly equal to B union A because we do not repeat numbers. So this is true. We take the repeated numbers only once. The second is associative law. A union B inside the bracket outside union C is exactly equal to A union inside the bracket B union C. Both are correct. You can take any example set A, set B and set C. You can add them and you can prove. A union phi set is exactly equal to set A because phi set does not contain any element at all. So in the absence of any element in phi set, A union phi set is always going to be equal to set A. A union A is exactly equal to A because everything in A is repeated. But in calculating the union of sets, we do not include repeated elements. So we only take them only once. That is why A union A is equal to A, B union B is equal to B. Universal set union A is equal to universal set because universal set is a basic set which is much larger than its subset A. So as we have already discussed that if one set is a subset of the second set, then union of both will be equal to the second set. That rule is applicable here. Now we have come to intersection of sets. Intersection of sets means we have to identify not the union. We have to identify exactly those numbers, those elements which are present in both the sets. The common elements which are present in both the sets are known as intersection of sets. Intersection of set is represented by a reverse U, A reverse U, B. The symbol reverse U is used to denote intersection. The intersection of two sets A and B will give you a set which contains common elements of both the sets. Numbers, elements present in set A and present in set B. For example, if set A is including 2, 4, 6 and 8 and set B includes 6, 8, 10 and 12. In that case, you can see the common elements are 6, 8, 6, 8. 2 and 4 in set A is different and 10 and 12 in set B are also different. So the common elements are coming to be 6 and 8. So if we calculate A intersection B, we find that there are two elements which are common to both the sets and A intersection B is written as 6 and 8. This can be represented in the given diagram. You can see the shaded area in yellow. The common element is shaded in yellow color and by intersection means we need to find the shaded area out of the given set of data. So intersection, we can clearly see that the common elements which are present inside both the elements are taken under the shaded area and that becomes intersection of two sets A and B. Now we are coming to the properties of operation of intersections. 
the first property is again the commutative law that says that A intersection B will be exactly equal to B intersection A. That is the same thing as we have seen under the union of sets because we have to find the common element. So whether you calculate A intersection B that is going to be exactly equal to B intersection A. The second is A union B union C is exactly equal to A union A intersection under the bracket B intersection C. This is associative law. You keep on removing the brackets and then finding. So under this we have to find A intersection B. Then we find intersection with C. But on the right hand side we find A intersection B intersection C which means we have to remove the bracket first. We calculate B intersection C and then find A intersection with the answer. Both sides are going to be equal if you take a simple example. Any set being intersected with a phi set is equal to phi because phi set does not contain anything. So, there will not be any common element present. Set A intersected with set A is equal is going to give you all the elements are common because both the element uh, both the sets are similar all the elements are common. So, A intersection A is equal to A. We have already known that A union A is equal to A also. A intersection B union C is equal to A intersection B union A intersection C. This is distributive law. This is new. You can take any two numbers any three sets and then calculate it positively. Now we have come to the difference of sets. Difference of sets means A minus B. Symbol is A minus B which is little bit different from the A intersection B thing which means A minus B means an element which belongs to A but is not present in B. An element which is present in A but it does not belong to set B which means it is not present in set B. If I write B minus A it would mean an element which is present in B but not in set A. Let take set A which consists 1 to 6 numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. B is the number 2, 4, 6 and 8. Find A minus B. Elements which are in A but not in B. Numbers which are in A is 1, 3 and 5 which are not seen in set B. So, difference of set A and B is 1, 3 and 5. Since these three elements are not part of set B. But if we go backward, we calculate B minus A, there is only one element which is 8 which is present in B, but that does not find a place under set A, which means there is only one element which is part of B, but not part of A. So, we come to a conclusion after finding A minus B and B minus A that is the difference of sets. We find that A minus B is certainly not going to be B minus A. So, cumulative, uh, cumulative law does not apply in case of distributive sorry uh, difference of sets. Now, we are coming to another example. Let us set V denote all the vowels of English alphabet. And set B denotes four numbers A, I, K and U. We find V minus B. Elements which are present in vowels but not present in set B. There are two elements E and O which is not present in set B. Since two elements are present in B but not present in set B. So, V minus B is going to be E and U. If we find B minus V, we are finding that there are three elements which are present in set V and there is only one element which is not present in 
set V, which is one of the elements which is present in set B, but not part of set V. So, there is one element K, so B minus V is K. So, we can again conclude that B minus V is certainly not going to be equal to B minus V. So, again commutative law does not apply in case of different subsets. Now we are coming to find complement of a set. We have already uh, known this complement of set, complement in matrices also. Complement means if A plus B is equal to 1 and A is equal to 1 by 3, then B is equal to 1 minus 1 by 3. B can be described as A complement, A dash. So, if there is a given set A, then the complement of set A would be everything which is not present in A, but present in the universal set. So, complement of A is equal to universal set minus set A. Let U be the universal set, natural numbers from 1 to 10, 10 numbers in all, 10 elements and set A, B, 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. So, we have to find out complement of A, that is A dash. We note that there are 10 elements in set U, universal set, but there are only 5 elements under set A. So, there are 5 elements under universal set which are not part of set A. So, these 5 elements are coming to be included in complement of A. So, A dash or complement of A is 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. There is another rule that complement of A dash would be exactly equal to A. Which means, if let us say set U is 1 to 10 and complement of A is 2, 4, 6, 8 and 0. So, what would be complement of A dash? It will include the elements present in set A 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. So, which means complement of a set is exactly equal to the set of itself. Now, we are taking an example. If X and Y are two sets such that X union Y has 50 elements which means the union of both the sets has 50 and x has 28 elements and y has 32 elements, then how many elements will be there in x intersects and y? x has 32, x has 28, y has 32, which means there are 60 elements, but some elements are common. That is why they are not being repeated. So, n x union y is 50, n x is 28, n y is 32, we have to find n x intersection y. So, we complement it by because common elements are eliminated, n x union y is equal to n x plus n y minus n intersection y. So, 50 is equal to 28 plus 32 minus x intersection y. So, which gives us 28 plus 32 that is 60 minus 50. 10 elements. So, there are 10 elements which are present in set X as well as set Y. 10 common elements. They are present both the sides. So, they have to be eliminated. So, there are 10 elements which are common to both the sets. We are taking another example. In a school, there are 20 teachers who ma teach mathematics or physics. They can teach both. Of these 12 teach mathematics, 4 teach both physics and mathematics. Then how many teachers are there who teach only physics? Let M denotes the teachers who teach mathematics, P denotes the teachers who teach physics and 
in the statement of the problem the word or gives a clue of union a or b is a union b so by that word we are given that there are 20 teachers who either teach mathematics or physics so number of n m union p is given to be 20 n mathematics is 12 n physics we have to calculate we have been given that there are four teachers which are common to both so it means m intersection p is 4 so use the same formula again m in union p is equal to np plus nm minus m intersection p 20 is equal to 12 plus np minus 4 we have to calculate number of physics teachers so by alternating we find there are 12 physics teachers hence we have con conclusion that 12 teachers teach physics alone there are four teachers who teach both all in all there are 20 teachers out of them 12 teach mathematics 12 teach physics 4 teach both so four are common that when that common element is eliminated we get all in all 20 teachers we have another example there is a class of 35 students all in all there are 35 24 like to play cricket 16 like to play football each student likes to play at least one of the two games then how many students like to play both cricket and football there are 35 in all 35 in all if you take cricket for C or X take set X as the students who will play cricket Y who plays football X union Y is given as 35 number of uh, students playing cricket is given as 24 and number of students playing football is given as 16 but numbers of players number of students who play both the game is not given to us so we have to find out x intersects and y x union y is equal to nx plus ny minus x intersects and y so 35 is equal to 20 plus 16 24 plus 16 minus n x intersects and y so that gives us a 5 number so it means out of 35 there are 5 students which likes to play both the games we are now coming to another example in a survey of 400 students in a school 100 were listed as taking apple juice 150 orange juice and 75 5 taking both the juices so how many students will be there who doesn't like to take either of the juice this is a complicated question you have to identify what states you have to take universal state is 400 N A A denotes apple B denotes orange and A intersection B is 75 both so N U minus N A A union B is N U minus N A minus N B plus N A intersection B which means 75 students are there which takes both the juices but added together they don't add up to 400 so that is why 400 minus 100 minus 150 plus 75 gives us 225 students so there are 225 students who doesn't take any of the juice I will uh, explain you in a simple manner that out of 400 students 150 students take one of the juice there are 100 other students who take the other juice so number of students taking both uh, taking both juices separately is 250 
but it is clearly given that 75 of them take both so if you both means take both the juices means they are they take apple juice as well as orange juice both the juices so 100 plus 150 minus 75 the clear number of 175 students who takes juice out of 400 175 takes juice so 175 subtracted from 400 gives you the number of 225 who doesn't like to take any juice at all there is one more example which says that a market research group conducted a sub survey of thousand consumers and reported that 720 consumers like product A 450 like product B what is the least number that must have liked both the products that is X intersection Y a intersection B let u be the total number of consumers question universal set includes thousand number of people taking the first is 720 number of people taking the second is 450 so s u t we're taking s and t so s union t is equal to n s plus n t minus n s intersection t 720 plus 450 minus s intersection t is equal to 1000 so which means the difference is 170 1170 minus 1000 that is s intersection t is 170 but the question is what is the least number that must have liked both the products so 170 is the least number that both kind of people preferring brand A, product A and product B. Which means the number is minimum 170, it can be more. So we conclude from the answer that there are at least 170 people who liked both the product A and product B. The next example out of 500 car owners investigated 401 car A, 201 car B, 50 won both A and B. We have to conclude whether the data given is correct or not. Total number universal set is 500. Set A is 400, set B is 200. So common element should be 100. NU is 500, NM is 400, NS is 200 and S intersection M is given to be 50. If you put values on the both the side, then S union M is coming to be 550. But under the question, in the question it is given that it is going to be 500, universal set is 500. But under our assumption, commutative law, the number is coming to be 550. So this is a contradiction. So the given data is not correct it is incomplete or wrong there is one other example the college awarded uh, awarded 38 medals in football 15 in basketball 20 in cricket it these me medals went to 58 men and there are three people who got medal in three sports so common element is three so we want to know how many received medals in exactly two of the three sports It says that people who got medals in football is 38, medals in basketball is 15, medals in cricket in 20. So football union, basketball union, cricket is 58 which is given. And intersection of all the three, if football intersection, basketball in intersection, cricket is given to be 3. So N, F, union B, union C is equal to nf plus nb which it should be plus nc minus n f intersection b minus f intersection c minus b intersection c so which gives us 18 this means there are people all in all there are 18 people who got medals in all the three sports 
out of them if you add continuing add a b a d plus b d plus c d so d is repeated so which means we have to eliminate it so we got fight uh, a plus b plus c is equal to 9 so which is the number of people who got exactly medals in two of the three sports so these are common elements b union c c union f and f union b taken together We have now come to uh, the conclusion of this study and I will tell you that mathematics is highly indebted to George Cantor for his, this German mathematician for inventing, discovering and applying set theory into modern business. Without set theory, most if not all mathematical aspect would be misunderstood completely probability would be a very intriguing subject without the application of set theory but despite the difficulties of applying set theory it still continues to help us building relations building functions and understanding complicated subjects like probability distributions so, all in all, this is a very interesting subject, albeit less complicated than others, but it helps simplify other things in a very easy manner. I hope uh, you understand the subject and you do practice. Next time, we will discuss another subject, another topic. Till then, thank you very much.